So, uh, welcome. We're going to take a look today at a force system where uh, we have forces, multiple forces, and other vectors involved in motion that are not aligned with our traditional y is vertical, x is horizontal coordinate system and how we approach those problems. Particularly, we're going to take a look at what goes on with an inclined plane. Uh, so let's try that out uh, for a sec. And um, so here we have our inclined plane. And we're going to say it's inclined at an angle theta. I've stuck you know, some sort of box up here, some kind of crate, whatever the heck it is. Doesn't really matter. Um, and we're going to um, look at this and like, imagine what sorts of forces are acting on such a thing if it has you know, some mass m. And let's say that there is a frictional coefficient for kinetic friction that exists that we will not give some particular uh, name to um, and or value for. And we'll say that we're accelerating downhill. Uh, so we know, as with everything, we're going to have gravity act on it. And so gravity will act down. And I'm drawing my um, vector representing gravity um, over here, um, bringing the arrow all the way down to the base of the triangle I've drawn. Because we're going to be constructing a bunch of similar triangles here. And I want to be able to use this uh, to help show some of these. Um, and reasons for which will become a little clearer later. Um, we also uh, have a normal force uh, pushing outward from the slope. Just length for later, depending. Uh, and I indicated we have friction, uh, so we have some frictional force uh, opposite the direction. We will say that there is some initial motion downhill, or there will be. Uh, we'll indicate that there is some kind of net force downhill. Um, so, we take a look at this situation, and we see that while one of our forces, weight, is aligned with our traditional coordinate axes uh, of y for vertical, we don't have all of our other forces. Uh, let's make normal force look a little bit more straight here. All of our other forces um, are pointing elsewhere, but they're all either parallel, anti-parallel, or perpendicular to each other. They're all integer multiples of 90 degrees apart from each other. These uh, net force acceleration velocity vectors, normal force, and frictional force. These two are always going to be perpendicular to each other. Um, so. We want to be efficient and make math simpler when we're doing analysis. We want to do this by choosing as many um, arbitrary things uh, that let us make things turn into zeros as possible so we can get rid of all those extra terms. And the way we do this when we get to the point of picking a coordinate system is to align the coordinate system so that as many of the vectors involved in the analysis will be lined up with the axes of that coordinate system as possible. And in that way, um, more of your vector components are going to equal zero, and that simplifies the math. So we do that. Uh, I'm going to pick a coordinate system uh, then that has an axis that's perpendicular 
to the slope and an axis that's parallel to the slope. And I'm going to pick the parallel one to be downhill because I like, typically I like to have it in the direction of the net force, uh, if be the positive direction uh, for one of my axes. Um, so I'm doing that. You could make it uphill. You could make into the um, board or into into the surface positive. It's arbitrary. Um, now we could go and say, oh, this is like an x y coordinate system. So we could do we could call this like x prime and y prime. Um, but instead, uh, what I'm going to do, because they are parallel and perpendicular to our inclined plane, I'm going to call this axis the parallel axis, and this one here that's aligned with the normal force, the perpendicular axis. Um, and we'll go from there. So when we're dealing with vectors, uh, the, and we've identified all of the vector quantities in our, in our system, we want to then break up any vectors into components uh, that correspond to those axes. And the only vector that's not aligned with any of these axes is our weight. Uh, so we'll break that up into components. Uh, and so we'll declare components for that. We're going to have a perpendicular to the slope and a parallel to the slope component. Um, for our weight, and so now is where all those triangles come into play. Uh, so there's a bunch of different ways that we can figure out what triangles are of have what angles here. And you may already be able to intuit this by inspection. Uh, but we can see uh, some things like um, this is the supplement. If this is the complementary angle to theta, this is our 90 degrees minus theta here, then this alternate interior angle is the same. This is a right triangle up here. Um, this, these are similar triangles here. Um, so since this is a right triangle, this is also theta. This angle here is theta, as is up there. Um, so that these add equal 90 degrees. Um, and so on. So this angle between our perpendicular component of weight and the total weight vector is the same angle as the angle of our incline. Um, and that should make a little sense, because when that angle is smaller, then the part of weight that's into the, the surface becomes larger. When the angle is steeper, uh, the part that's parallel to the surface becomes larger. Um, so we can work with that. And then if we want to connect our forces and acceleration to each other um, and mass and so on, we have a situation with unbalanced forces. We're going to work with Newton's second law of motion. Here we've written it uh, in the form with constant mass. So uh, we go ahead and we work that through with components. Um, because I know that friction and normal force are connected, and because normal force I know is dependent on weight, um, and we and we may know the mass. I'm going to go ahead and work with the perpendicular to the surface components first. So we have um, the perpendicular components of the net force at equal mass times the perpendicular component of acceleration, and 
in that direction, we have the normal force in our positive direction and the perpendicular component of weight in the negative direction. And we may well have a situation where we have some part of our acceleration perpendicular to the surface. Perhaps this inclined plane is like the blade of a shovel and we're flinging something up into the air or it's a plow um, or what have you. It's a simple machine, it could be many sorts of things where you might have acceleration off the surface. But in this case, we're just sliding along. There's no acceleration into or out of the surface and we get to make that disappear. So that tells us that our normal force is the same size as the perpendicular component of weight, um, which is going to be, um, you know, this is going to be the overall weight times cos theta, because it is, it is the adjacent side to that angle, um, which becomes mg cos theta or normal force. So normal force and mass and the angle are connected together like so. And now we want to look at what's going on in the uh, parallel to the slope direction. So the net force in the parallel direction is mass times the parallel component of acceleration. And in this case, I'm indicating that the overall acceleration is the same as the parallel one. Um, so in the positive direction, we have the parallel component of weight. And in the negative direction, we have friction. And we know from our understanding of friction that friction is proportional to that normal force by our coefficient of kinetic friction. So we will put that in. The parallel component of weight gets to be weight times sine theta, since it's opposite this angle theta. Uh, so that becomes mg sine theta minus, um, we'll take our normal force from the perpendicular part, bring it over there. So mu kinetic times mg cos theta is mass times acceleration. And so in this case, we see that um, our mass, we've got mass in each of our terms here. Uh, and so for this particular case, the mass drops out. And we get a relationship. And we also see that g is in each of the terms on the left-hand side. So we get a relationship that goes like sine theta minus mu kinetic cos theta all times g is equal to acceleration. Um, but you, know, you might be solving this for any number of um, unknowns, uh, any number of particular variables. If acceleration were known, then we might be solving for one of these other things as our variables. But this is the essential approach here. Um, and you know you need to look at the particulars of whatever situation you're analyzing. Maybe somebody is pushing this uphill, and you have an additional force in the parallel direction, and friction is also down the slope. So you have to be you know, careful to approach each problem individually um, rather than use some pre-solved problem as a complete blueprint. So that is it for our um, look at working with force questions where the axes 
uh, the chosen axes are not aligned with the vertical and the horizontal. They are rotated.